All right. Hi, I'm Dumi. I'm JD Beck. We're at Amoeba. And this is what's in our bag. I can talk about Deer Hoof, I guess, because yeah. that's all I've been listening to lately. <laughs> They're like my favorite rock band right now. I mean, nobody else in the world sounds like them at all. And pretty melodies over really distorted guitar and just wild drums. Greg is insane. Yeah, so deer hoof. <laughs> what, what's next? We can talk about Mad Lib and Dilla. Oh, yeah, too. yeah, let's do this one. Yeah, Mad Lib, okay. Sound Ancestors, and Rough Draft. In terms of like changing the way that musicians play, these two guys definitely. Uh, Top two. Rough Draft, I think, is one of my favorites. I don't know if this is. Di yeah, this is Dilla's mix, so all of the highs are mm. basically non existent. Which is kind of cool. Who needs highs? Yeah, mm. who needs high frequency? Um, drum wise, I feel like most decisions I make kind of can always fall back to this. All right, next one, Bjork. We actually just discovered Bjork's music last year. Yeah. We, ha we knew the name, but we never actually went deep into it. I think the first song we've ever heard was Hyper Ballad. I go through all this Fast brushes on the drums and just like the prettiest. Yeah, every single one of those. Yeah, artists. everything on that record is insane. So yeah, listen to this one. That's it. Let's do. Well, those two I guess go well together. Yeah, sure. I mean, any of them. Sergeant Pepper, I think, kind of changed what you can consider songs. Yeah. Because it's all. I mean, it's songs and it has pop structure, but just the way things are put together is just insane. still find new stuff with that and I think it's yeah really beautiful the stuff whole, on there the whole thing and also our album cover was inspired by this album yeah cover. we wanted to make a set because of that houses yeah. of the holy this is Led Zeppelin is one of our favorite bands from like yeah. when we were kids that's the first band I discovered outside of jazz because I grew up only on jazz and I was only listening to Led Zeppelin yeah. to a point my parents were like, what is going on? Yeah. This is one of the few albums I can listen to from start to finish and not have a mm -hmm. moment mm -hmm. that feels less than Nothing a moment before. Yeah, it's really insane. Led Zeppelin, you don't think about their harmonic quality as much as you know you would think about the rock side of it and I think this album really lets that shine. <laughs> Melodically it's so beautiful and Jimmy Page is and John Paul Jones really um, very nice. Yeah, the shit. Alright, that's that's you. Um, this is one of those records that I didn't really know about until not too long ago and some of the stuff on here is really insane. Come right in and you'll find me in my house somewhere keeping busy while I wait. Busy doing nothing that's mm -hmm. like crazy upright over like semi bossa nova drums and yeah really really sick. Um, sick vibes. Yeah. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah Queen. Queen. My mom's obsessed with Queen, so like growing up I would hear it. I don't know, I was always like, whoa, that sounds kind of strange, it's not like the usual, you know, rock band and stuff. But I never took the time to deep, like dive deep into it. And we visited the 
uh, in Montreux, in Switzerland, like where they recorded. Yeah, it was kind of annoying. We wanted to visit the, yeah. the studio, and we got there, and it was like a fake was console fake. and like fake gear, like they just remade it. I was like, what? So I'm saying, this don't. This is the weirdest thing ever. Don't ever do that. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah. Yes is insane. I mean, they're one of the first like prog rock bands. It's hard to put it into words, but when you hear something like this album, I feel the same way like watching Lord of the Rings or Harry Potter. You just aren't yourself anymore, which is awesome. Culture and sound. Twenty-five-two. Yeah, that's insane. He's insane. That's kind of like the the secret version of Giant Steps that yeah. people don't think about. That was his like over. <laughs> yeah, that's insane. So anyway, yeah, this one. Yep. Up here we go. Grand Wazoo. This record is insane. By Justin Bieber. Justin Chilling. Bieber. Yeah, yeah. Frank Zappa himself is just like a genius, obviously, and the way he blended jazz sounds and... No one writes like him. Every, yeah, no one writes like him, and that's, that's why he's one of the best. And the Grand Wazoo is awesome. I've never seen the back. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. Kind of it looks like Mike DeMarco. <laughs> Heavy Weather. This is Classic. Like one of our favorite yeah. records, obviously. The whole album is a masterpiece. Bunch of crazy tunes. Havona is probably our favorite. favorite. Yeah, definitely. They changed uh, pretty much everything we do with this record. There's before weather report and there's after weather report, and I think uh, they really changed the the path of, like of jazz. Like, yeah, making it. I don't know. I hate the term fusion, but mm -hmm. if you. Like if somebody is like, what is jazz fusion? You're gonna be like, well, that's fusion. There you go. Yeah, that's in, what it is. In its is. best form, so, for sure. It's just beautiful. All right, <laughs> the real McCoy. <laughs> we had well, it's a super, super, super classic, but we had yeah. to we had to pick it up because we always play it. Elvin Jones is playing on drums is equally as influential to me as McCoy's piano is yeah. to Domi. So it's one of those records where it's like, it's weird listening to it because, at least together, because we're both like... Focusing on one instrument. Yeah. Yeah. Keep Jarrett, the master of accordion. Accordion master, Honestly, yeah. He's the definition of like, Jazz piano playing. I'm He's gonna... a piano player's piano player. This record is also my dad's favorite record of his, like, and probably one of his favorite jazz records. So I grew up, I was nearly born into that record, right? So yeah, I had to, you know, take it. Keith is one of the few piano players that, like, rhythmically, it's in so time, yeah. interesting, even without just the choice of, you know, his phrasing and things like that. It's just Keith is the best, I think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Herbie, too. Herbie. Hey. On, so on the track Spider, it's like to mm -hmm. me, it's like still one of the most grooviest bass line ever written. Paul Jackson on bass. Paul Jackson. Spider. I played key bass already a little bit before, but when I heard that, I was like, ooh, this is insane. And that's that became my favorite thing to ever do, like play key bass because of that. Herbie was it's one of the, he blended like funk and pop writing with Jazz. Jazz, yeah. Yeah, that's why he's still the best. He did every everything, yeah. pretty much. So yeah. I hate to say it, I've never heard yeah. this. 
Okay. It's actually a soundtrack to a book. It's really weird. Really? It's this? Like, it's like a whole book series that I guess someone wow. who was so inspired by the book that they wrote. They said it to do it. Wow. The yeah. reason I picked it is because this is the coolest I'm cover God. ever. Like you in 40 years. Got it. That's what I'm going to look like in 40 years, actually. It's true. So, I don't know how you say it. Steve Reich. Reich. Has some really crazy stuff, and it's Pat Metheny on guitar. Number three is just Pat. For, it's literally for 30 minutes, he's just playing like the same line, but yeah. it's just constantly building of like these loops. It's perfect to fall asleep to, <laughs> but it's also perfect to just sit there and just think to. I got into this because I was super into Aphex Twin lately. I know Steve Reich is a big influence on Aphex Twin, I think. That's it. Aphex Twin, Square Pusher, Venetian yeah. Snares is insane. We yeah. gotta do it again. All right, scratch it. Let's yep. go back. <laughs> Thank you so much for talking with us Thank today. Thank you. Yours. Bye.